Hi, I'm Terry Smith with Cars Winnipeg. Over the past several years, I've developed a deep admiration for the staff at the Movement Center of Manitoba and the conductive education programs they provide. And I hope after watching this video, you do too. I'm a proud sponsor, board member, and client. Like every expectant mother, um, you know, you're filled with hope and joy. Remember I was on the road traveling at the time when my wife phoned me and let me know we were expecting our second child, Olivia. When we found out that we were having a girl, we were very excited. Cameron was uh, born uh, February 28th, 2005. He scored 9 out of 10 on his app car and uh, his pediatrician came in to see him and said he was doing wonderfully. And then boom, at 28 weeks, Bryce and Sean were born, so 12 weeks early. Bryce being first born um, had, was the little guy with cerebral palsy. Uh, Sean, his twin, managed to uh, escape that. It's a terrible emotional um, roller coaster from nine months pregnancy, expecting a nice healthy baby to having a child that has got a disability. When we went down for the ultrasound, the technician, for better or worse, told us that Cameron was missing a large portion of his brain, one of the more difficult days of our lives. She was diagnosed with hydrocephalus as a result of a stroke that she had had sometime during my third trimester. She had six neurosurgeries before she was nine months old. Probably at about the four month point we found out that she was blind and then uh, and at that point we also discovered she had a palsy down her left side. She's diagnosed with a fairly severe form of autism. We were overwhelmed and confused and heartbroken. And they did not think that, that there was a lot of hope for his prognosis and basically said to us, you're on your own. When you have a challenged child, uh, the goal is to achieve the best potential. And arms down and say, ah! They have to be pushed. Uh, they have to be motivated. For the children who have significant motor movement problems, particularly the ones with cerebral palsy, uh, the goal, the, the, the real goal is to get some form of ambulation, walking. Oh, oh, oh no! What? Had about 30 plus years in pediatrics, and there's no doubt that the conductive education goes a long way in helping these children achieve that goal. Conductive education is really about being the best that you can be and it's about quality of life. Conductive education originated in Hungary. Uh, the program's been around since the 1940s. The program's been in Canada for uh, around two decades. Over the last probably five or six years, really we've seen a huge, huge growth in the number of clients wanting to access the program. Okay, and see how much can you make your fingers Move. So the bones in your fingers make them move. And really we're, we're working a lot on functional goals. What do you actually need to learn to get you to that goal? I turn it back yeah, it. The brain itself can't recover, but it teaches the, the, the body and it, and it teaches part of the brain to do the function that is needed to be done. It's my job as a conductor to make sure that everyone's reaching their goals. I stretch my left leg out. I stretch my left leg out. You're standing in front and you are leading the group. We're teaching them about their movements. So we're teaching them about where their knee has to be, where their hip has to be. If we teach them in a group situation, it's more of a natural transition to, to real life. Good job. Make sure it doesn't fall out to the side. Just bring During the month of July and August, we run summer intensive camps 
where the clients would come for six hours a day from Monday to Friday for the entirety of a month. Five. Good job, guys. There we go. William Wintours. The amount of work that the children put in is on par with any athlete that's training. Um, they're here for six hours a day, and there are no breaks in that six hour period. When they're eating lunch, it's, it's not just to rehydrate and to refuel, they're working on skills for independence. A huge thing that we work towards here with the children and with the adults is improving their confidence. I think we've probably been coming here for about five years now. Nice, nice work. Woo, good work. Olivia uh, came to us able to walk, able to talk, uh, with no idea of her body or what it was doing. Not only did Olivia really learn to move her body, because she's moving her body, she learned to use her vision in different areas and in different ways that actually she's, her vision's improved. Let's stand up and go to lunch. I'm hungry. Phoning in the kitchen. We are seeing her independence. She never plateaus in her development. She has continued to kind of grow and get better. Toileting. I mean, she now, through help at the Movement Centre, she understands the whole concept of when you need to go to the bathroom, what you do when you need to go to the bathroom. And that is enormous in helping you out. When he started here at two and a half, Cameron could not walk. And a year later, he blew me away by walking into the kitchen. You can't describe that feeling. If you look at someone like Cameron who has such a severe neurological impairment and see how much he can do, and you have the expectation for somebody, if you offer them the right support, then they can they can really uh, surprise everybody. People on the bus go up and down. The dream of every father, I think, when he comes home from work, and. I remember all the kids, they would run to the door and say, Daddy, I love you, um, or Daddy's home. And one day, Cameron came up and said, you love me. That is priceless. The Movement Center is located at 1646 Henderson Highway. Our facility was gifted to us by Martin Bergen and his daughter Miriam Bergen in June of 2002. We're now running programs Monday through Saturday, so we're operating six days a week. We have a program now for people with MS. We know that we could be helping many, many more individuals with, uh, you know, adults with stroke. One, two. Uh, I felt that very quickly, that I was in the right place. Um, I have seen steady improvement. I now feel that for the most part I live a normal life and to a large degree that is a result of the therapy that I've had here. Good recovery, well done. The little they mistakes a little learn. How does it make you feel to come here? Um, empowered. We have a lot of adults that we're working with um, from motor vehicle accidents. I love it. I even ask them for more work and harder work. Jen, oh, you burp on the phone. So. Well, Chance had congenital heart disease, so he had to have what was called a routine cardiac pulmonary valve replacement. So we had to fly to Edmonton for the cardiac surgery. The heart surgery, to say the least, went wrong, and he ended up with a massive stroke. Nobody, nobody in the government told us about this place. 
Just one of the moms mentioned it in passing that she goes to, to the movement center. Every year we're amazed with more mobility, more independence, more. And that's all we wanted was more than sitting in a chair and going home. And that independence has come, even has gone forward into our home where we're able to leave him and be independent for, you know, a couple of hours at a time. That never would have happened five years ago. I can't imagine what life would have been like if that mom hadn't have said, do you know about conductive education? We need to be told, and every parent that uh, ha is in a situation like we were should be told. The Movement Centre of Manitoba is not funded by government. What we are forced to do basically is charge a fee to clients, um, children and adults, the families who use uh, our services. But to make it affordable, we are subsidizing these fees. Currently, those costs are running upwards of $500,000 annually. Our rates are $20 an hour for children and $27 an hour for our adult programs. Our costs can run a family anywhere between five and eight thousand dollars a year. Every time somebody walks through the door, there is more fundraising that needs to occur. The facility that I'm fortunate enough to have my son in is full. So we need another facility. We know that with more staffing with a second facility, we could take those people off that wait list. We need to have a stable funding environment to cover those fixed costs every year. The passion and the commitment here and the fact that they have to go it today without government funds, we need to step up. It's not like they're helping one or two people and 40 are failing. Everybody that goes through here gets benefit from it. It's a very well polished, beautiful diamond uh, that uh, it, it's, it's one of the little things of Winni that, that makes Winnipeg so special because uh, uh, because of the results it gets and how it gets it. There's so many families need this, they can't afford it, and I just can't think of a better cause or a better place to put your donation money. The people who can write big checks, please do so. Another way to help the Movement Centre is to take part in one of our amazing fundraisers that we have every year. One that's becoming quite well known in the city is Moving Groove, which is a dance relay that's held um, every year. We have an annual golf tournament. You can uh, take part in Fun in a Bun, which is a gourmet barbecue. To remember, you got to squeeze with your hand. Even in the most hopeless case, there's always hope. And there are miracles. There's no doubt I have seen them. And so, um, but you have to work for them. And uh, that work can be done for these children and adults at uh, the Movement Centre with conductive education. My son Bryce has been coming to the Movement Centre since he was eight and a half years old, going on to university with an attendant. When I see my son working so hard, it empowers me to keep going and to keep fighting the fight. Don't give up. Don't give up on what you think your child can and cannot do. Um, you don't know what they can do until they've been pushed to that limit and I truly believe they know how to push to that limit here. How do you say that they've given you your life back? You know, how do you tell somebody that they've given you your son's life back? How, like, how, what, what is that word? What are you most proud of right now? Myself, that I didn't give up. I didn't give up.